And welcome, uh, everybody. Yeah, so uh, here we are. We're going to do a very fun podcast. Uh, I thought we'd get together all the uh, uh, some of my favorite people, and we could discuss this uh, very interesting topic of what is going on with uh, Britney Spears. Uh, we got some heavy hitters here today uh, joining us. He's known as the uh, bad boy of conspiracies, the heartthrob of the occult. My good friend and yours, Isaac Weissup, everybody. How are you, brother? Yeah, I didn't know if you're talking about me or uh, Jay Dyer over there. Well, man. Jay's got his own introduction. He's my personal Oh, man, you guys are so Hollywood, dude. When I, I get rock, when I get I rock hard with the Isaac occult. earlier. I was flirting with Isaac earlier, but <laughs> if Sam wants to flirt with me, that's fine. Uh, I am flirting with you, dude. I was giving you a great Ooh. intro about how uh, when I, when I got to get rock hard about the occult, I know who to go to. My good friend. Right off is uh, giant uh, Alex Jones hosting appearance. Jay Dyer, how are you, brother? Doing great, dude. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I've been I've hosted three times now, I think. So. Well, dude, you deserve it. You're a hard worker, and you're really funny, and you're, you're very knowledgeable. Thanks, um, and then uh, introducing her last because, you know, chicks. Am I right, guys? Only kidding. Uh, the hardest working person I know uh, in comedy, uh, she, she basically – just rails in the face of adversity. Nobody gets more shit, but nobody gives less shit than Chrissy Meyer. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me, Sam. It's always a pleasure. I love, you know, you get a lot of shit by people. And I, I you know, I hate to be like, oh, sexism, all that stuff. But I think it is because you are a chick in a pretty male dominated genre and you just keep rocking. So I'm super happy for me, for you. Your, uh, in, your podcast got into the top, what, 100 on uh, Apple Podcasts? Yeah. At one point I was number two in South Korea. So it's always, it's always exciting. Yeah. In the, in the comedy interview category it's yeah it's been like sometimes top 50 top 100 i don't know it changes like every day um i just so had cool. an episode come out today with Riss flex who's another big uh conspiracy babe she's a big youtube following um not as big on twitter but uh she has good work too i'm i'm just getting hated on twitter uh, yeah <laughs> but hey dude uh so the other day i think chrissy you retweeted somebody was like i can't believe i'm gonna say this but we got free Britney Spears. And, uh, you know, I'd heard this story before, and, and it's once again just came uh, to the forefront of the news in this crazy-ass time. It's found its way to the news, and it's what's going on with Britney Spears. And, you know, I'm just going to start this, and then feel free, anybody, to jump in. But I've always felt that Britney Spears is the female version of Mike Tyson. What Mike Tyson is the guys, Britney Spears is the women. Like, they were this giant – pop culture icon that just fell so hard to the point we all got whoa 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 what's going on and we kind of all got super excited to like kind of lift them back up on their pedestal and uh mike tyson seems to have found his way in marijuana and bare knuckle fighting uh and but now you know britney seems to be back into uh just some chaos right now i know isaac you had uh posted a something with the way she looked and uh and what was in her eyes and all that stuff so yeah. i don't know where you guys want to start but it's wherever tactic. you guys i know I, jay tactic. and isaac what it's I, I, would, it's tactic. I would love to start off uh i want to say a quick piece uh for you know any of the listeners i'm a i'm a big britney fan i did lots of shows on her i've been following this chick for many years uh we have to understand, and, and this is my perspective on it. I feel like, uh, and I've got sort of like some notes and different ideas because I wasn't sure where we want to go and all that stuff. Um, ultimately, like I sympathize for her. I think she has been uh, terribly traumatized and we could theorize about what that is. I've got my own ideas. Um, but this is a woman who owned an entire decade in the 2000s. She broke the internet more than anyone else in history. Uh, she's got this level of success that rivals a lot of folks. Uh, if you look at the similarities between her and Michael Jackson, the, you know, they, they both dated Wade Robson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they both had multi-million dollar Pepsi deals. They both were like dangling their kids off the balcony or driving with them on their laps. Their fathers ruled their lives. Mm -hmm. They were money-making machines and they both been manipulated uh, physically and spiritually, uh, physically in the sense that Michael Jackson 
got chemically castrated. And I would argue that Brittany went through some kind of horrific thing and, and we can get into that, but there's, there's allegations that her voice was uh, tampered with to have had the little baby voice, you know, like that she did. Cause, uh, cause she was, she sounded too much like Christina Aguilera uh, because they were at the Mickey mouse club, which uh, you know, my man Jay over there can probably speak volumes on Walt Disney. Uh, but ultimately my perspective on it is I think that there's this very real ritualistic occult element here and mm -hmm. they are using her much like many of the, if you look at the occult philosophies and dogmas of using women as the consort, as the goddess to channel the energies for the gain of man, which, you know, gets into my sort of live tard OG granola lifestyle of, you know, <laughs> down with the white man and everyone, you know, all that stuff. But like, the truth is, is like, you look at the history of it, these, these women are used and traumatized to channel goddess energies uh, for the gain of the man manipulating them. Wow. Yeah, it, I, I definitely agree with everything you've said, Isaac. I think she had some early on MK Ultra, MK Ultra you know, shit going on they, they must have like i mean that was an amazing uh you know mouseketeer cast that she came from it was like the same time as timberlake christina aguilera uh i think she had some mk ultra going on at that time and they sort of like oh this person is gonna be we're kind of choosing them i think possibly all of them you know as a path to success there and we've all seen interviews of her sort of basically like short circuiting um you know, who people say maybe it was like a certain trigger word or something where she just like went somewhere else, like not even a complete sentence. Um, and yeah, I wonder if almost like they're using her as an example. I mean, we know her, her dad has been like super abusive, basically, like if she doesn't comply and, you know, take her medicine, he threatens to take, you know, her two boys away from her. And yeah, I think it all kind of started at that first sort of public meltdown in 2008, because I think that's when this conservatorship thing really started. Um, and, and, and now it's insane. Like she's a, she is a beyond grown ass woman. She's 37, 38 years old. She yeah, can't drive, crazy, right? she can't vote. She doesn't have her own lawyer. Um, it's just insane that this kind of thing uh, is happening to an American woman in the year 2020. I want to bring in Jay real quick, but I just have to give, you know, Isaac gave some kind of like, you know, um, little setup here. I just, guys, I have to let you all know, um, full disclosure, uh, I was in a Britney Spears video. Uh, she actually stepped over me and I got to see where babies come from. <laughs> uh, the video was um, based on a, a sketch that I wrote. Uh, it's called Piece of Me. You can see me. I play uh, perverted paparazzi in it. And uh, she steps right over me. And it was a very big uh, moment because uh, it got her back on track momentarily. She had been a train wreck up to that. And everybody was really hoping. It's the only time she ever won video of the year. It was done by Dana Marshall and uh, Wayne Isham. Uh, but the history of her has been chaos. And, you know, the Mickey Mouse Club, and that's why I want to hear from Jay, is that. Um, you know, those kids are all super talented. I mean, to get in there, you have to be so talented. But what follows that is unspeakable, I believe, right? So I just got to let you guys know I'm kind of a local celebrity on this topic. So, you know, I, I'm not trying to big league anybody. Just know I've been there, okay? So just wanted to get that out. Uh, Jay, I mean. We know you're the you biggest hoe. We all know you're the biggest hoe. Bring us through, like, what that's about. <laughs> we know you're the biggest hoe, dude. It's okay. We know that. Um, Isaac, by the way, do those four cubes, does your voice only hit those four cubes? What is that? Is that <laughs> See, you know the tricks of the trade. That's my cheap-ass studio. I can't afford to buy, like, eight cubes. It's a ghetto ass studio I've ever it seen. It looks like you just punched holes in the wall, like how <laughs> guys do. You're like, let me just cover these up. Cut a hole out. I the wall. Yeah. No, I'm no, saving anyway, up I'm to sorry. get more soundproofing someday. I'm just joking. I was so I was I was uh, I said Britney's tactic, right? Because he made the Mike Tyson joke. So that way I flew over everybody's head. That's okay. I'll be spitting bars later. I'll be flying over everybody's heads too. Because <laughs> of the toxic song. Anyway, so if we rewind and we step back and we think about um, Disney, uh, one of the things that blew me away was that this whole facility, Disney, this whole area, that was all obtained by the CIA for Walt. 
like all the people in the CIA at the time, they helped arrange that in concert with the Stanford Research Institute. So the SRI, Disney, they all uh, put that together. And then Disney, believe it or not, actually functions like a city state. It has its own constitution. It's like a weird uh, Vatican almost, right? the way that the Vatican is its own city state. So if we put it in that context and we look back at Walt's history, uh, Disney's longtime connection to the deep state, running propaganda, <laughs> When you come up into the modern period, there is a direct connection between huge corporations, uh, DARPA, defense contractors. They put in all the biometrics at Disney. So basically, Disney is like a big mind control experiment, the whole thing, in my view. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of talented people. I'm not denying that. But the idea of what it is, what it was supposed to be, right? You've got like the, the city of tomorrow with uh, Epcot and all that. That's That was all pre, uh, preparing people for like, you know, living in a smart city and this kind of stuff back in the 60s and 70s. So the whole thing, if you understand it from that perspective, it makes perfect sense why the sort of moon children that Disney births out of its womb are all of these mind controlled kind of stars. And like Sam said, they'll pick the most talented people that they know have a lot of potential. And I think that there is legitimate uh, like real evidence to prove that some of these people have been through like trauma based mind control. And my best evidence for that is to look at the way intelligence agencies have cultivated people to be what are called swallows and ravens. And I will let the comedians commence to make all sorts of jokes that they want about swallows, but you can imagine yeah. what a swallow is, right? This is it's a, a sex show, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you spit like a lady. <laughs> yeah. So, that, so a sex operative is a government trained sex. I mean, a swallow is a government trained sex operative. This is a long time thing. It's gone on forever. And who better to be one of these than a pop star or perhaps an A-list actress? Uh, I, I agree with that. And, I, you know, it's not just in, uh, you know, uh, entertainment. I mean, there's a good chance, guys, that Obama's mother was used as that, like as a, what, the, oh, 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 what do they call them? Sex vixens? Uh, you know, it's like they, they no. turn the men into killing machines and the girls into sex vixens, vixens to allure men, put them in compromising situations. Obama's father is ninth cousins with George Bush Sr. Uh, Obama, uh, basically like a born to be president, Manchurian candidate, uh, her mother, his mother, there is like so crazy. Like Obama has to be the first one to find like naked pictures of, <laughs> of his mom on uh, like the internet and be like, God dang mom, you know, but they were, they're there. And uh, you know, and what does that say about her father that it was at the CIA that's willing to do that to his daughter and use it, use his daughter to seduce targets that the cia wanted to compromise and that's what a lot of these girls do it and then going back to britney i mean if we see like the first videos that they put out of her she's like she's 15 years old putting on some super seductive type you know energy out in these videos to the mm -hmm. point where i even believe like and correct me if i'm wrong but like I think a Rolling Stone magazine has it. You could look up her skirt while in in the. Uh, pic. I mean, like it's unbelievable. For oops, people, I did it again. Yeah, something yeah. like that, where people like are okay with this. I guess we were, we either knew knew something was going on, but didn't want to look at it, or we just were really naive back in the day. Uh, I I vote for the naive because like um you know I just heard a song the other day. I, I wish I remember the name of it, but you know there's there's songs from like the seventies and eighties and they're talking about like the, and it's these grown ass old dudes talking about falling in love with these 15, 16 year old girls. And uh, you look at the groupies for Led Zeppelin and all these, you know, seventies rock bands. It's like, dude, like what's wrong? Like these guys were creeping. And um, <laughs> that, that Rolling Stone cover you speak of, that was uh, right around, it was with her debut album. She, and she was like, on this bed with like a Teletubby. It's like, dude, what kind of creepier stuff's going on here? And, but that's what it was all about was, uh, you know, they filmed that video, uh, Hit Me Baby One More Time. She was 17 when they filmed it. And she was, you know, supposed to be flaunting as a this school girl, right? Because there's this weird, uh, and, and I don't have any like sort of basis besides general perversion of these 
these occultists that do this antinomian stuff, but there's this weird flaunting of taking a, a good girl turning her bad, which is like the name of a Rihanna album. And, and, this, mm-hmm. and this list could go on and on. We can make a 10 hour show on this topic, but that was what Britney Spears was because she was this good Baptist girl and they were hell bent on demonstrating and showing, basically they were pimping her out um, for these, these, these group of these sort of weirdos that we, we theorize exist. Uh, we see the same thing with Katy Perry, where she was, you know, I, she, you, we've all seen the interview where she's like, yeah, I was going to be a gospel singer like Amy Graham. Then I sold my soul to the devil. And, you know, it's oh this age old tale that goes on and on. Um, and, I, and I'll try to be quick and brief to, you know, let you other guys uh, talk about this. But, you know, Jay was talking about Walt Disney and he was a member. He was like a Rosicrucian and he was part of this order of the De Molay, which ties him into all the ancient mystery schools. And these ancient mystery schools, they talked about all these practices and rituals used to uh, channel and make spiritual union with the divine, which was like, you know, making contact with God, essentially. And that's why when you research a lot of this stuff, it sounds a little far-fetched to think that, oh, they were using Britney Spears to channel goddess energies from another dimension and now it's fried her brain out. But if you look at the the ideas of Carl Jung, uh, he wrote a book called Archetypes and the Collective Unconscious. Uh, They talk about all this platonic idea of these primordial images and talking to the subconscious. And they wanted to um, manifest these things because they believed that these archetypes, like the goddess archetype is the specific example here, that it 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 was hidden. And one needed to sort of do these rituals and channel this energy to project and manifest it. And that's why, arguably, why we see all this symbolism in the movies and the music videos of these eight-pointed stars, which is the star of Ishtar that goes back to Babylon. It's always these, these you know, two degrees of separation to these pagan goddess uh, symbols and stuff. Um, and there's a couple of other points here we can real briefly cover. There's this idea of the goddess personifying parts of the unconscious mind that haven't been integrated into the ego. And men, this is like Carl Jung's shtick that he talks about in that book. Men put women on a pedestal as the goddess because it's what they call the anima projection. And that's where the term, the woman of your dreams comes from. It comes from Carl Jung. And the idea is that the man projects the perfected goddess as a projection from his uh, subconscious to manifest the things that he needs to become perfected. Again, it's the idea that a woman is used for the man's gain. And you see this in the history of the occult with folks like Aleister Crowley, who was, you know, beaten up on his women. He was kept trying to find the Scarlet Woman. Jack Parsons and uh, L. Ron Hubbard were out there channeling Marjorie Cameron in the desert to, to do the same manifestation principle. Uh, you know, and their goals were different. They were trying to bring about the, uh, <laughs> the antichrist. Um, but, but the list goes on and on of all these examples where they're, they're doing these sort of ordo templi orientis mag- magical rituals to transmit entities uh, through the practitioner, you know, whether or not Britney Spears was like willingly a participant or not, I would argue that they do these rituals at the behest of these, these, these people. And, you know, because when you look at the rituals and the, uh, the things that, they, that happen because of it, they're emotionally and physically draining and a lot of people lose their minds, which would explain why you have all this weird stuff and all this mind breaking down, like the dissociative identity disorders, the MK Ultra stuff that Brittany uh, exhibits when she starts using a British accent and talking about, you know, and, and we could talk about Mona Lisa, which is like her alter ego that she tried to manifest and they shut down quickly. Uh, but but that, I just wanted to throw that, that little little uh, bit of sort of goddess occult history in there. Uh, yeah, the I remember being uh, like growing up, like Brittany's a few, she's my sister's age. So she's like two-ish years older than me. But I remember like at the time when Hit Me Baby One More Time came out, it was like everything. I was like, mom, send me to Catholic school. There's no way I can be a sexy public school girl. You know, I was like, get me the outfit. It was like everything. And I agree with you, Isaac, like the obsession of like 
turning a good girl bad and then also like turning a you know bad girl good it's like the madonna horror complex thing and like and then i remember when christina aguilera's dirty came out that was like also everything like she was so like slutty and nasty and it was like oh i have to be i have to be like both these women and it's interesting and i don't know how these you talked about like the the sort of archetypes um like the sex kitten thing like the cat theme the like there's a there's like a sort of a hot pink theme i don't know if that's i think that is with mk ultra and there's also like a a black mirror episode that i think miley cyrus um is she's she's basically portraying britney spears is kind of the uh the theory there it's like basically her whole you know life being used and um for everybody's like financial gain um but i don't know if you guys want to talk more about like the specific you know like kitten training and like you know the colors and um i just wanted to add something real quick you know mm -hmm. we were talking about whether it, it, it actually might something might be going on with these girls. Well, we know that Bella Thorne, who is a former Mickey Mouse uh, club member, uh, had made some pretty crazy statements. Uh, by crazy, I mean, what she's stating is crazy. The statements aren't crazy, but what she's saying she went through is hell. Uh, that basically she would be doing, you know, uh, runway photos, you know, red carpet photos, with people that she knew was uh, sexually assaulting her as a child Oof. and that everybody knew it was happening. And, you know, I, I, I'm a, I think I'm a little older than everybody here, but there was a time, you know, NBC had this very famous, like, um, I think it was like Saturday must see or Sunday must see. I mean, way back, we're talking like different strokes days and like all those kids just had the worst lives. And we later on find out that like they were all being passed around. They were all being passed around. We used to even joke, make jokes about it. it's like someone's going to get a drug problem. And like, cause we thought it was funny because they were just, they were just going. So they had so much money that they were just wild people. But later on we learned it was because they couldn't come to grips with the abuse they have. And for some reason out of this, the one that came out the cleanest is Justin Timberlake, and I don't know how that's possible, but, and then, then that actor that also, but it just seems like it, the women who are involved with this are having just horrible, horrible um, uh, reactions to how they, how they were treated to the point where you got to go, something has to be going on. It, you know, you want to think maybe it's because their childhood was ripped to them, but I think it's more about just like the people that were there, the adults that were that were there were that were meant to protect them did not protect them. Yeah, like Amanda Bynes, hot mess. Like she's not even, she hasn't really been working in years. Um, and it's easy for us to be like, oh, well, they're celebrities, right? Without knowing all this this backstory, like, well, they have a lot of money, and you know, it's easy for regular people to just kind of distance themselves from that and be like well i guess this is the price you pay for being famous but then when you look into like no it's a it's abuse it's it's crazy mind control it's uh it's really scary yeah i, th I think a lot of people if they're skeptical of this as i was actually for a long time and then i started reading i read a shit ton of books on did mpd all that kind of stuff and um one of the books that, that really stuck out was uh, Walter Bowert's book, Operation Mind Control. And he has a whole chapter or actually multiple chapters on uh, Candy Jones, who was one of the first proposed uh, subjects of these kinds of multiple personality tests, swallow type people that the CIA used. And uh, Donald Bain wrote the book on her, uh, The Control of Kenny Jones. But both of those books are really interesting. And they, they go into detail as to how she was used by like Bob Hope's USO tour and this kind of stuff, which suggests that the sex kitten stuff probably goes back to Marilyn Monroe. Even, it, you know, a lot of people speculate that she was involved in this kind of stuff, too. Um, and she had all the same kind of problems of, you know, the drug abuse and all that kind of stuff. But uh there's a great documentary for anybody that's skeptical. I recommend that it used to be on YouTube. I don't know if it's still on there, but it's an old nineties HBO documentary on multiple personality disassociative identity disorder. And it, ha it, it profiles the life of about five or six people that have really severe cases. And every one of those cases that people were involved in ritual abuse, they were involved in cult abuse, 
uh, or they had some kind of traumatic, you know, sexual type experience when they were young. And some of the people are extremely talented. This is the interesting uh, feature to this is that they will actually demonstrate these like fantastic abilities in different fields. And sometimes it's, it's one of the fractures in the personality. Like they don't even know the full extent of the other uh, personalities talents. Right. So um, it's definitely, I think, surprising if you don't if you haven't looked into that you know it sounds outlandish that it would work that way i don't know how it works but i mean there's a wealth of information there's a whole uh, colin ross he's a uh, psychiatrist he has a book called the Os uh, osiris complex where he's investigated about 20 cases of people like this and in most of the cases you find the same patterns of ritual abuse and he just treats it like an like he doesn't say necessarily that it's all true. He just says, I'm going to treat you like as if, you know, this really did happen. Uh, and he, he's surprised even at the prevalence of this pattern. And so I think with these networks and these different, you know, so many cults in Hollywood, I mean, there was a, a situation like Isaac was talking about when she had one of her breakdowns right after that, she started, you know, getting into Kabbalah and all this kind of stuff. So there's always this weird kind of intelligence or cult aspect. And don't forget y'all, Brittany used to date a high up military black ops guy. She dated him for, I don't know how many months or a year. And then he, he got killed in a, in a killed in a, uh, like a helicopter accident or something. Right. So was that her handler? I don't know, but I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah. Her boyfriends all have that handler vibe. If you look at their photos, especially the current one there, like I've seen a lot of fans of Brittany being like, I don't trust this new boyfriend, this Sam Agashari, that the new boyfriend does not post any pictures with Brittany that, you know, the, po the pictures of them together are just Brit on Brittany's page by her people. Um, it's interesting. And she's been this, like in this mental facility since like January or so. And to your point, uh, Jay, that like one's capacity for like creativity and talent, it's almost like the bigger that is, they would link that to like, you know, higher probability that they're also kind of easily fractured and easily controlled. Exactly. Like there's a correlation between talent, creativity, and this control, which is really fascinating. And let's not forget that, you know, she had a couple boyfriends in a row that were like almost later on found out to be drugging her. Uh, Oof, when, yeah. when she yes. did the video that we were in, uh, I mean, I think she, her dad had just stepped in because it was coming out that uh, I, I forget what, I believe he was Middle Eastern. Only be, the only reason I say that is because I, that was his name. Uh, his name was very Middle Osama. Eastern. It was Osama Sam Lufti. Yeah, was it the backup like, dancer? Yeah, that's a, no, that's a different guy. Okay. That's uh, that's Columbus something or the other. And it was and, in the uh, testimony in the like court cases where they, where they talked about him drugging her. I mean, it, what we saw that was the exact same thing. With, who was that? Who was that uh, giant playmate that died? That we used to be a stripper with the eighty-year-old. Uh, what was her name? Oh yeah, yeah, Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah. She Anna she Nicole had all the Smith. same signs. Yes, you remember? Like Howard oh, K. Wow. Stern got in trouble because he was drugging her. So every time, like she she'd ask for water, he'd slip her a roofie or something like that, and she was always a little cuckoo crazy. And that's what you happens. You noticed that she she seemed to have that same. Marilyn Monroe programming. She was yeah. literally trying to Breathy. become Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean all the pictures and all that stuff, and that's when when uh, Britney st started going pre after she left Justin Timberlake, which probably was like they they were really controlling her, right? They had her on lockdown. They were together, and that was Disney was just cranking cash off these guys, and, and the machine was cranking cash. And then when we noticed. When you start going off the reservation and there's a little turbulence, you see all of your handlers go away. And, you know, a great example of that is Michael Vick, right? Michael Vick in the NBA, he had all these major uh, endorsements, Coca-Cola, Nike, all this. So anything, anytime he got in, in trouble off uh, the field, they would clean it up for him. But once it became obvious that he wasn't going to be that quarterback that everybody thought he was, the sponsorship started going away and all of a sudden there wasn't anyone protecting him and all this crazy stuff that he was doing. And that's what starts to happen with Brittany when, you know, it's like she was so big for so long, but there was that little swoon where nothing was hitting. And that's when chaos just started breaking out. She started dating really crazy guys 
And again, they were out, they were busted, basically drugging her. And so now she's drugged. She doesn't know what's going on. And all she's hearing all the time is about how crazy she is. Oh, you're losing it. You're a crazy person. It's like, you know, Ugh. her, Michael Jackson, that was another great example. It's just like, dude, you can't even leave your house anymore. It's like, it's not even like a, a fun life to live. Now on top of that, you have somebody who you think is in your corner drugging you all the time. That's like horrible. It's a horrible existence. They pulled her uh, recent Vegas show because of that, because she wasn't taking her medication. Well, and- that we'll get into that yeah. because that's, that is more about her dad trying to keep her on lockdown than it actually is about her being out of control. Right. And that's, we'll get into that, but I don't know if anyone has any more thoughts on like her background because, you know, so she dates Justin Timberlake that goes, and then she starts going through these guys. I mean, she dated Fred Durst. You remember like that's <laughs> when uh, Limp Biscuit kind of became like, Nobody liked him because Fred Durst was banging Britney Spears. I'm like, there's not a guy in the world that wouldn't do the exact same thing. Why are we judging this dude? I know we hate rap metal, but come on. I mean, that was that was peak Britney Spears. Everyone would take a shot at it. And we're, we're just such player haters. We're like, oh, dude, Britney Spears is so stupid. You're like, well, we would all like give our left nut not, at her yeah. at that time, you know? But it's like all that stuff starts to wear on you, man, and starts going crazy. Uh, her dad is, I don't know how much he's in the picture. We see his mom, her mom all the time. We don't see her dad as much. We know her sister's coming up. Then the kid's in the Nickelodeon stuff. And now she's thrown into like another ring of pedophilia going on over there. There's thoughts that, because she never named who the father was. And there was all thoughts. It was that fat fuck who was like doing all the, having all the foot fetish stuff going on dan schneider i believe is his name or is that the owner of the redskins either way shady people you know and uh and that whole thing and how she just dropped out of of um all, all just all show business jamie spears isn't in shows business at all she's just trying to live a normal life which is kind of interesting but probably because she went through a lot of crazy stuff do you think they were pushing her to stay with Timberlake? Do you think that was like a Disney orchestrated relationship? Jay, what's your thoughts? I think some of these are. I don't know about that specific case. But to Sam's last point, I did want to add that um, that's another pattern that comes up pretty often, like with Elvis. Do you remember that Elvis's handler was that military dude? I think the Colonel Tom, I think was his name. And, he, and the way that he controlled Elvis was really simply he just kept drugging him. Right. So Elvis was bombed out of his mind and it was this military handler guy he had this whole time. Wow. That's another power. So Dosing like uh, Charles Manson kind of controlling his people. The now the you know, I don't and I don't know how deep you guys want to go into like cloning talk and deep. all that. Okay. Deep. So you know, you can tie this alter ego idea, like she so she had this sort of you know, like Jay was talking about the, the DID. It's it's oh. In, in MK Ultra, the theory goes that they fracture these people's minds and then they insert certain alter egos, uh, which Brittany, you know, she demonstrated that. She had like these, the British girl, the weepy girl, the diva, the incoherent girl. And we saw this on primetime with Diane Sawyer. She had this weird breakdown. She's clearly got some weird issues going on. Uh, as far as her father having the conservator, uh, conservatorship, they claim that one of the claims is that she has these mental problems ranging from bipolar to early onset dementia, uh, or it could be these sort of MK ultra byproduct of what's going on in an associated press interview. She said it herself. She says, it's like an alter ego type thing. Something clicks and I go and turn into this different person. I think it's a kind of gift to be able to do that. Now, what happened around the right before things re- really went off the rails for her in 2006, she uh, recorded this album called Original Doll. It was supposed to be this dark sequel to the Z- In the Zone album, and we see this with uh, celebrities often, where it's like they they want to like have this complete 180 and you know give you the uh, the Chris Gaines to Garth Brooks sort of thing. And one of the tracks was called Mona Lisa and she showed up at a uh, Los Angeles uh, Kiss FM studio unannounced just showed up and was like hey I got this new track it's called Mona Lisa and 
uh, her handlers didn't know she had, I, I don't know, escaped the compound or whatever. And, and on that song, um, she has the lyrics. And what was funny was I was getting the lyrics to prepare for this show and Google the proprietors of reality, those, those shysty bastards. You type in lyrics to uh, Britney Spears' Mona Lisa, and they tell you that, and I'm going to give you the, the short version here. Uh, she's the original. She's unforgettable. She wants you to know she's been gone. But if you listen to the song on YouTube, clearly the lyrics are, she's the original. She's unforgettable. She wants you to know she's been cloned. And then she repeats, Whoa. she's been cloned. She's been cloned. It's very clear, plain as day, but Google will tell you that, no, it says she's been gone. And you can find a couple of websites that have the lyrics that do say the clone version. But, Whoa. you know, that's my personal beef with Google. But anyway. Are you a clone person? Do you, are you into the cloning and that we're that advanced that we can clone? Like, well, I, Donald, I'm not against it. I'm all about that action. But Well, well Donald Marshall... I mean, you say what you want about this guy. I mean, he's a little off the reservation. A little. He, he says he's like written every music that every song that's ever been successful ever <laughs> and named played, every band. But outside of that, he said he kickboxed Joe Rogan in a clone center. But outside of that, I think there's some stuff that we can listen to. <laughs> yeah. So like, I can't, I can't back up or t take any of his claims as face value. But he he claims they can duplicate DNA and all this stuff in five months. They can create a whole new replica. Now, uh, you know, and I don't want to go off the rails with that. The, what we have to look at with Brittany <laughs> is um, with Brittany, I'm, I'm trying to get to my notes here. She, um, anyway, she had this Mona Lisa thing, right? Well, there was a time where she has a backup dancer. I'm trying to get the name, Maya Marie, okay? And the claim going around was that Maya Marie was her sort of stunt double or she was filling in for her at, I don't know, concerts or singing or whatever, which is why Britney Spears lip syncs so much. I don't know if I believe that. I think Britney Spears does a lot of dancing, moving around. I don't know how you would sing and do all those movements. But anyways, that's the, that's the theory. What's curious about Maya Marie, because I looked into it, is her father was the unknown comic. I don't know if you guys are familiar, you comedians, right? The unknown comic. He was the guy we from the were. gong show. With the <laughs> what? And, and the gong show was yeah. hosted by Chuck Berry, who claimed he was a CIA assassin. So you got a couple degrees of separation between these intelligence communities and the the people running this thing. And the, the theory goes that Britney Spears knew that they had a clone on deck, whether that was Maya Marie, whether that was Donald Marshall's lab, and she didn't like that. And if you look at her body of work, uh, there's, there's some stuff to support that. Like her, uh, 2009, she had a break the ice video, which shows her blowing up a cloning center. Um, what? a lot of her lyrics are, um, there was one song out to find it where she's almost taunting, uh, work bitch. If you look at the lyrics to work bitch, she's almost talking. If you look at it from this perspective, she's almost talking trash to her clone. And if you watch the video, Man, at the end, that's crazy. it shows them blow, blowing up a bunch of mannequins. Whoa. Work Bitch was my alarm clock song for years because it was like, get up, go to work. Bitch. Good choice. It's a good choice. Well, you remember um, Ave Levine? There's all that famous story that she got so tired of fame. She actually had like a stunt double, and that eventually either she got off or she's like, you take over, just send me a couple checks and we'll be cool. And that, that side chick took over. And they say at that moment, you could see a change in her music. Like the music suddenly becomes much darker, you know, a little crazier. She starts dating guys in Nickelback. It gets evil fast. Ooh. <laughs> That's dark. No one could come yeah. back from the Nickelback darkness. Uh, no one comes back from Nickelback. Look at this food in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know what? That... Remember that movie? There was a movie that came out about Saddam Hussein's clones. It wasn't that good of a movie, but it showed how a lot of these people do have, not clones, but they have like body doubles. You know, Saddam Hussein had like 10 or something crazy like that. And then, you know, there were multiple Osama bin Ladens. Remember that? There was a fat guy and there was the skinnier one. And uh, that's pretty common. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there weren't more situations where, I mean, I guess that goes back to like the Beatles conspiracy, right? Like the, that's not real. That's fall McCartney. That's not really Paul McCartney. 
but there are a lot of themes that like Isaac said, where you get this cloning. So by the way, have you noticed how many movies have come out about clones constantly? Mm -hmm. You might watch that recent Netflix movie. What was it called? Horror movie horse girl. And that was like alien cloning and all this stuff. Anyway, I did want to just back up that in a 2008 TMZ article, they also said that she does have multiple personalities. So there's, there's multiple claims of this. I mean, everybody's seen the Barbara Walters clip, but um, there is other people claim it too. Uh, I think Beyonce's even claimed that she can like go into these alternate sort of things that take over, which is fascinating. But wow. Katy Perry talks about, uh, remember she's, they released that one video with her handler and she's basically like, I don't want to be her anymore. I want to be me. And she's like, <laughs> I just want to be me. And she's like, I bet I had to, you know, did, and then she's like. Did you get like, to meet her, Sam, when you, were, when you were in that video? Did you get to, like, did she Meet Britney Spears? Yeah, like, seem- like, a little bit. Like, you know, you know, you just. Stand in there, yeah. You don't want to bother them. And just, like, you knew she was going through so much. And, like, this was just, like, a moment of peace where she just like can just sit there by herself. So you don't want to be like, so what's Justin like, you know, is, <laughs> are you <laughs> MK Ultra she, to the right? You know? like. <laughs> right. But you You're know, so like. the funniest thing was during the shoot, you remember there was that one guy that was like, leave Brittany alone. Like, I swear to God, I'm going to catch shit for this. But all of a sudden I see this chick. I'm like, who's this chick? They're pretty hot. And I realized it was him. I'm like, Oh dude, not good. And he's like, you know, uh, I just wanted to talk to Brittany for a second. If you don't mind. I'm like, not, no, it's not happening. I mean, that sounds like the worst idea ever, you know, and later on he goes to do gay porn and probably could have saved them, but you know, what do I know? But anyways, but it was such a, like a weird moment. Cause I remember she was sitting on, it, we, it was a shot where she was just all in black. I mean, the whole studio was just black except for a light on her. And I remember just thinking, like, this is probably the most famous person on the planet right now. And she seems so lonely, man. Aww. Like, so lonely. And, like, even if you want to reach out and be, you know, be there for it, it's just, like, she's probably, like, such, like, you know, just like a, like a street dog, just kind of skittish with everybody. Mm. Couldn't even probably make a connection with her at that point. And I remember when her dad came in, and got rid of all those guys. I thought, what a what a happy moment this. You know, finally, dad shows up and starts regulating stuff. But you know, I mean, he's the guy that made it okay for her her to join the Mickey Mouse Club. I mean, like yeah. that in itself is kind of like crazy. I, I know. I we have two kids and like when you have babies in LA you 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 push them around stroll everyone's like you gotta give them in the showbiz they would do so oh, bad like God. fuck especially no. twins right yeah fuck no never I'm never gonna do that I, I, it, it's just it's not worth it you're just setting them up for just a, uh, just a chaotic life for every like one person that maybe makes it through and is like an okay somehow becomes a normal human being. Uh, I mean, they all just seem to be just messed up and it's just not my thing, but I just remember her just being so sad. And like Christina Aguilera went through that too, where she was just a super train wreck. And, you know, I mean, we all have moments where we're like super overweight and we're like, Oh, I gotta do something. But she's going to have those weight problems. She was, remember she was singing and her, her tanning stuff was going down. It's just like, and you just mock these people. You, oh, look at her. She's such a train wreck. But I don't do that anymore. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, she probably just has just been through the grinder, man, through the grinder. So what happens is her dad takes over and um, you think everything's going to get better. But it's, you know, there's a there was a famous uh, po- there was a podcast that would just it was dedicated to Britney Spears Instagram. They would just talk about Britney Spears Instagram. Uh, it was called Brittany Graham. I think it was, uh, I think a girl named Tess was running it. I asked him one time to come on, but I think they think I'm a Trump nut. So they're like, hell no, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm like, okay, dude, that's just like, it, it would help your podcast, but I guess you don't want to do it. But they were kind of talking about stuff that was going on with her. And it's just like, you know, what was she set up? You know, again, like everybody was kind of like, what's going on with Brittany? She's crashing and burning. Please don't let it happen. And kind of, she had, kind of gotten on some stable ground for a little while this 
Vegas show was happening. And, you know, I had a show, you know, at one point, Brittany and I both had a show at, uh, you know, Plant Hollywood in Vegas. You know, wow. I mean, I'm not bragging, but, you know, I'm bragging. She was playing a uh, the giant theater and I was playing a, uh, a closet on the third floor <laughs> that four people went and saw. Um, but, you know, I m remember she had a really crazy deal, man. It was like they would fly her in. She wouldn't stay in Vegas. She would have to fly home every night to do her gig. I mean, fly. she would live in L.A., fly to Vegas every night, be helicoptered to the hotel, do her show, jump back on a flight, and go back to L.A. every night. And it's just like Whoa. crazy. I mean, that's just got, I mean, like I, I've traveled like twice in a week and it's like, uh, oh, it's so daunting to you. That had to be a lot. And she was killing it. And then they remember they were just about to re up her again. And what Chrissy was talking about, uh, that this whole chaos, the, the whole, you know, the whole series of events that we're talking about right now is kind of, starts to roll and unveil itself and which is her dad won't let her do anything unless she's on her medication. Yeah. And that's what, and that all kind of started early 2019 and it was a hot topic. And then from what I understand, and maybe there's a, an allegedly involved here, but allegedly uh, her father had Twitter take down the free Britney hashtag uh, because of all this stuff going on. And now it's sort of coming back up again now on and if you look at her Instagram, I don't, you know, her eyes look very sunken and her, her teeth have a gap in them now. In Which the I don't think she had one before. No. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's why, like, I really looked into those clone things. I was like, that's really bizarre. No, I'm with you on that. Now. That is creepy as shit. I mean, it doesn't I'm seem like too, her. But that, that's by uh, a space. Yeah, right that's down the crazy. middle, both uh, you know, both teeth. I don't know if that's indicative of some kind of. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah, now she's got and and there's all these. You know, some of them are a little goofy, like her eyelashes saying "Call nine one one." I mean, I I can see the nine one one, but uh, hold on, know. I thought you were inferring that. Are you telling me in her eyelashes, it literally says "Call nine one one"? Right, right. And someone sent that to me and I was like, that's stupid. But then I zoomed in and you can see on the one that says 911 and this, and this is on my Instagram at Isaac Wise. Hop, like and subscribe everybody. I want to get my, uh, I want to get my IG thought on the, uh, yeah, it dude, says 911 on her, on her one. And that's pretty clear on her eyelashes. The other one is supposed to say call, uh, that one maybe, uh, but, and I don't know, man, someone run it through a Photoshop and they said, well, it wasn't Photoshop, so it's not real. You know, that would mean that she meticulously placed her eyelashes in a format to make it. I mean, I have out. eyelashes that say 9-11 was an inside job, and those were expensive. <laughs> <laughs> those don't come cheap. No. But then, but then another, another sort of conspiracy theory about her right now is on her Instagram, and, and I take all these with a grain of salt, on her Instagram – she was, you know, she's been act posting all these weird photos and like one of her fans, which she has obviously millions is mm -hmm. comment. Yeah. yeah. Comments about the yellow, sh the, the previous post that I said, wear a yellow shirt if you're in trouble. And the next post she's, she's wearing a yellow shirt and uh, there's some cryptic message on there that supports the idea of, of that. Um, but yeah. Again, and then they were like, Oh, if you need help again, wear a blue shirt. And it was like, yeah, and how many thousands yeah. of people saying are saying, "Hey, wear a red shirt. Hey, wear a green shirt. Hey, wear a yellow shirt." Like, uh, of course, one of them is going to hit. I mean, this lady's got thousands and millions of comments, so like, I don't yeah. take it too far, but like, something's going on with her, and and uh, it's starting to trend again. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens with it. Um, some someone's bringing up like the amount of money that she is making. I mean, getting versus what she's making. Yeah, okay. only 78k a year out of uh, she's made she makes like what like 3 million or so a year. She gets like an allowance. Yeah. Hmm. It's crazy. That is bizarre. Yeah, look how I mean, her like, strange like is... movements. Like this is just who like who posts this? Yeah, it's so weird. Her videos, I was watching a bunch of her like dancing videos and stuff and it's like, dude, something's up with her, man. I don't know if she's just been locked in the house too long or what's going on. 
Uh, what are your I guys' mean, takes on like her voice being being sped up? Um, you know, you know, via computer, like in post, or do you? I've also heard theories that like her voice has been like physically altered. Yeah, that, that's the claim that they've altered her voice uh, because she was dropping a debut album the same time as Christina Aguilera and you know, the, the Illuminati handlers run everything in the music industry. So they were coordinating the event and they wanted her voice to be very distinctive uh, from Christina Aguilera. So what that process looks like, I don't know, but supposedly they altered her voice. Then she, which is apparently very unhealthy and very difficult on the person. And that's why when she created that uh, original doll album that they never released and disavowed, mm -hmm that it was actually her actual voice, which is a bit lower apparently. Um, yeah, I've heard that too, that it's yeah. like people have slowed it down and been like, this is an example of what she really sounds like, which is still a, a great voice. Yeah. Um, what I had heard uh, some information, I have friends who work in the recovery business in I believe Southern Cal. And they were telling me that she was in uh, a recovery center uh, and the only reason I bring this up I don't, I'm, is because he said it was the, like the lowest of low uh, recovery centers. Yeah, it's called like, the Bridges to Recovery um, Center. And it's, yeah, had terrible reviews on it's there. It's like $500 a month, which mm -hmm. lends to the whole notion that like, this is about money, man. And like them want not to spend it and them not wanting to, and by them, I mean, Either her father or someone who's working with her father is controlling the money coming in and doesn't want to spend a lot of a lot of it. And to send her to, you know, like, you know, I have my problems with like the recovery business and how, you know, you want to go to a rehab. It's got to, it's going to cost you $30,000 or whatever, uh, you know, uh, every six months or I don't even know the numbers. But to send Britney Spears to a five hundred dollar a month rehab, that's where people who just have nothing, you know, have no one to help them, and they're getting off Skid Row. Go to send it's like a her BYOB there, not to recovery. <laughs> yeah, it's it's shocking, and it just leads to it, it, like the her handlers and what they're actually doing to help her get better. And are they doing any of this? Or is this just a play to, like we were talking about with Elvis? Jay was mentioning, uh, you know, his handler. And it's like, keep them drugged for as long as you can to keep the money coming in. And when the money's no longer coming in, dispose of them, you know? And it's like, I hope that doesn't happen. But, man, it's just like the, the hair Britney Spears is in a $500 a month recovery center. Just lets me think that whoever is around it, they just don't, I mean, like, I, I don't want to say they don't care because maybe they don't have any say in it. And maybe they can, he can easily, more easily manipulate a $500 a day recovery center and be like, all right, low key, but make sure she's still getting her crazy pills and let's not disrupt, you know, her medication schedule here. So that, I got a question, Sam, since you know a little bit about that. What do you think of Dave McGowan's theory where he talks about the possibility that some of the recovery centers and more of the more elite expensive ones might be involved in kind of corralling when, the, when people have these kind of breakdowns, bringing them back to their programming, like putting them back into their, you know, program pop star, uh, uh, you know, operating system or whatever. I think the, the when 2007, she went into that one that was uh, – like the Aaron, Eric Clapton owned Crossroads stuff. And that was, I guess, like a really elite one connected to these shady things in the UK. Um, do you think that there's a possibility that some of those rehab centers are actually like reprogramming centers? Uh, it, it is definitely possible. The only, you know, I've only gone to 12 step programs. I've been in sober living. That's about I it. Mean, I didn't mean you. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, no, but what I'm telling you is like, from what I've experienced, I can only speak okay. on what I experienced. Now I know that, you know, a lot of these, uh, not a lot. I, let me take that back. There are wonderful people in recovery, but I mean, if there's a chance to make cash, it's not hard to find somebody that will play ball. So is it out of the realm? that some of these recovery centers are reprogramming centers, wouldn't doubt it at all. Wouldn't doubt it at all. I mean, if you're paying big bucks, I mean, 
some of these people do whatever you want. Now that isn't condemning an entire industry at right. all. I, they're like any industry, you know, there's some scumbags. I mean, there's five people on this podcast. One of us is a creeper probably most likely. And I'm not going to say, but it's the guy who hasn't talked yet on the show, but that's between you and me. Okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm rude, dude. That's rude. <laughs> anyway. So the point <laughs> is like, uh, Jay, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, we've seen, you know, uh, uh, we've seen crazier stuff. I mean, Dr. Yeah. Drew's a wonderful person, man. He's a wonderful guy. But for the longest time, that like, that that um, celebrity rehab had a horrible, horrible track record. And it's not him because I've met him. He's the nicest. And I'm sure he was just trying and it was an opportunity. Uh, but, you know, you try to get these famous people and then they need recovery and you got all these yes people around them. It could be a recipe for disaster. And I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, like, do you want, I mean, we see with rappers all the time, you know, they don't get the Britney Spears treatment, but when they go off the reservation, they get off, like they're part of the program and then they don't want to be a part of the program. Like, has anyone seen Ice Cube lately? I mean, that dude was putting some stuff up about the black cube and Saturn on that. Like no one's He's heard melting. from him for a little while. And it's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. where is cube? That will be our next episode. Where in the world is ice cube? We don't know, man. But when you are part of the system and you are a money making machine, they really hate when you go off the reservation. Okay. Uh, to the point where like, have you ever heard like, um, uh, like Louis C.K., Chris Brown, Michael Jackson, Prince. These are all like people who made it in the industry that wanted to go off and do their own projects that just had some really bad uh, things happen down the line. Some, you know, some were death. Uh, others were just like just giant scandals that kind of crippled their brand. It's like, you don't want that, dude. You don't want that. And that's dude. why I get nervous when certain people uh, that I know are doing their own thing, going off the reservation. I don't want to say names, but it makes me nervous. You know, because if you listen to Buddhists, if, all you got to do is just change 1% of the population to change away uh, uh, um, the masses think. And some of these people have the biggest riches ever. And when they want to go off and do their own thing, the powers that be don't like, I mean, like, don't like that. And like, I, I, I'm being honest with you, man. I like the size of my show. Would I like a little bit or maybe a little bigger, but not like way bigger. You're not a size queen. Yeah. I'm not a side dude. If I've heard how many times have I said that and while crying in the mirror, um, <laughs> but the boy is, it's just like, I, I, it's just like, it gets really nervous when you get that big, how you don't, I mean like Kevin Hart, right? I mean, let, let's take a look at Kevin Hart, right? Kevin Hart going back to your cloning thing has this horrific accident where they say he severed his spine. Oof. And then like, Six, seven, eight months, ten months later, it's like deadlifting. It's like the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Gets if it were me, I'd be like, make my clone taller, please. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But it is kind of interesting, man. Well, I it's, it's like, I, I thought about that. That guy's, that guy's a cash register right now. He yeah, could stop doing it even if he wanted to. Hmm. These people, a lot of, you know, and for people that are skeptical, which I don't think any, any of the swarm is skeptical of these conversations, but for some people that you know, maybe are new to this whole idea, the, these people are little mini economies. Like just because Britney Spears makes $100 million in 2019, it doesn't stop there. Like it's a whole supply chain. It's like the concert venues are, ma they're making millionaires in the concert venues. They're making millionaires at the concessions. They're, I mean, they're making millionaires all around them. There's this ripple effect throughout there. It's a, literally a little economy. So to think that they wouldn't take advantage of that and do these horrific things. Like, I don't know if you got, you know, I, I know people that the, the parents die and the kids do horrific shit to each other for the little pittance of inheritance money. I mean, like people do this stuff. It's not that crazy. And um, you were talking about, you know, you were talking about the, the cheap uh, $500 a month, the, uh, Recovery oh, yeah. Center. Bridges to Recovery. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that referring to the early 2019 uh, thing where she got she got uh, involuntarily committed? 
Before that was the one from January tw- 2008, but there might've oh, been, okay. is that the one you were talking well, about, I, Sam? Yeah, I, I, I would have to uh, ask my friend. I had a, co- a talk with him today. I was telling him that we were doing this show, you know, and okay. he goes, oh yeah, man. She's like, I, I knew people that were in the recovery center with her. I'm like, that's gotta be weird. Like you're just coming off some tweak and then you look up across, <laughs> it's like Britney Spears. You're like, okay, I'm off tweak, but where is, who, who slipped acid here, right? <laughs> um, going back, oh, go, finish your thought, Isaac. No, that, that's it. I was just gonna say there was a, they, they, were, they were researching this, there was a court investigation into this uh, early 2019, her being involuntarily committed. And the doctor, her medical treatment doctor, Dr. Timothy Benson, he was supposed to go speak at the court about her medical treatment because that was the question was like, are they being abusive to this woman? And he freaking got an aneurysm and died at 48 years old, totally healthy, Whoa. totally fine. And he gets this aneurysm and dies right before, uh, 10 days before he was supposed to go in and testify about what was going on. Whoa. You know, uh, going about going off the reservation again look at dave Ch- Chappelle. i mean like I, I i mean there's nothing and this was old hollywood and when i mean old hollywood like three four years ago not this this melting thing that we have right now they just can't figure out what's going on what's the next phase it's going to be in but you know when the dave Chappelle show was on it like that was so big it changed the lexicon of this country it was so big and when he turned down that money they don't like that dude hmm. you see that happen all the time when somebody forces their way off a, a, a super duper successful show because they want their own show that show that they go to always fails because hmm. the powers that be don't want people thinking they could do that too so no matter how popular that second show is they killed that off, man. And, you know, I have my own theories that ratings aren't real anyways, that they just tell us what they want based on what they're trying to push. Uh, but when Dave Chappelle left, where did he go? South Africa. Where, when he come back, just shredded, right? Like uh, Incredible Hulk, like Dave Chappelle. Black Hulk came back. Mm-hmm. He's got like lats and all this stuff. And, you know, and you know, it's so funny. Someone went up to Dave Chappelle and said, hey, are you a clone? And he's like, how am I supposed to know if I'm a clone? If I, w- I wouldn't know. I mean, I, it's a great I, answer. You know? <laughs> well, but it's a very clony know. answer. <laughs> it's a very, no, that's what a clone would say. Yeah. Bleep, bloop. Did you guys um, want to get into this? Uh, her photographer recently, this is like uh, maybe the last week or so, her, this photographer, Andrew, something or other. I think these things were on TikTok. Um, it was like basically a letter from from Britney Spears and fans have verified that it actually is her handwriting. Um, and this guy read it off, you know, it's on TikTok, I guess, where they have this whole like separate other like Britney army uh, saying that like, you know, she can't say anything, she does need help. And if, if she says anything, like they are threatening her, they're threatening to take her kids away. Um, and it's interesting that she kind of like passed it off to this photographer to read. Did you guys I didn't see hear that? Anything about that? Oh no. yeah, this is like very recent. You have the letter. Can you read it to us? I... In your best Britney voice, we will be judging. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No. Didn't Madonna do that British thing? Where she remember when she started talking British too? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Madonna introduced uh, Britney to Kabbalah, and Madonna yeah. was the one that initiated her at the VMAs when they walked yes, down that pyramid. That, yes. With and Christina, they're making out, and Christina Aguilera is like, uh, "What am I, with- chop liver over here? <laughs> Nobody wants to make out with me." And it was on that free Masonic floor with uh, Madonna dressed yes. up with the Masonic top hat. Okay, I found it. Okay, um, uh, she wasn't listening to her manager. Uh, he lost control, so he wanted to scare her. Brittany has been silenced to speak about anything that's really going on. The people controlling her. Her life have made $3 million this year. She speaks up. She is threatened. She would love for new eyes to see her situation. But if she brings it up, she is constantly threatened uh, that the conservators will take her kids away. And Didn't they already take the kids away, though? She doesn't have custody, from what I understand. Well, like, to, I guess, further, like, take oh, away her visitation. Oh, right, 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 right. And there was, like, a one of her sons was on Snapchat chat and people were like asking how's your mom how's your mom and he actually like ended up admitting to like oh yeah my 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 grandfather's an asshole meaning 
Jamie Spears. Um, so it's yeah, interesting think, that the I think kids Brittany's don't like him. My mother also was speaking out about how abusive he was towards Brittany as well. I mean, dude, I mean, again, uh, another correlation, uh, you know, it's just like Michael Jackson. Like everybody hates the dad. And maybe there was a reason he was out of the picture for a while. Now she crashes a burn. He finds some way to get in and it looks like he's saving her. But in reality, he's just setting it to control everything while cashing fat checks. And that really sucks. And I would love to know what, as a conservator, he, what happens to that money? If she has this money coming in and he's breaking her off a, a piece, what happens to the rest of it? Because I know in, in Hollywood now, because all these parents spent all their kids' money. They spent mm. all their money. Uh, and these kids get to 18 and there's no money left because the parents have been running and gunning. I wonder if they're taking her, the rest of her money and putting it away. But I, I, I don't have to do the research because I know the answer is nope. Nobody's protecting that money. And that's why he's being so crazy with it right now. And that's why he's setting her up for – it just really sucks. And it's like she has to stay on the medication to, in order to see her kids, but the medication's probably shish kebabbing her brain even more than shish kebabbed. So it's like you can't, you know, you, she just can't win. Yeah. God, I mean, there's like, it's, it's all over the internet. It's like, you, it's hard that people have said, like, oh, this is her handwriting. Um, basically like, yeah, after reading Kevin's article in People, I was amazed at how a lot of the focus was on Brittany, their mother, to sell a story for People Magazine instead of be the focus being on Kevin. Uh, Kevin's saying Brittany's divor Brittany divorced him. She was forced to by her lawyers because she went to visit him in New York. Basically how like K-Fed sort of uh, worked with the lawyers to basically like screw her over. Um, I can't believe someone custody. like Kafe and a white rapper that never hit would do such a horrible thing. Ugh. I mean, there's anything outside of male feminists. Is there anything worse than white rappers? Yeah. Look at this guy. Except for R.A. the rugged man. Sorry. You're wonderful. Always going for the bad boys. Yeah. I mean, she did have incredible, you know what it is, man. It's like when Brittany, when you get to that level as a woman, you're either so hot or so famous normal guys don't want to talk to you because they don't have a chance they don't think they have a chance and just psychos take chances like they're like i yeah. got nothing to lose you know i, I think that's what you, happened bro. with j-lo i think that's happened with j-lo it's like everyone was who's who's left but a rod you know <laughs> yeah i mean you just take a shot at it and he, 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 they're like oh man finally somebody's talking to me he happens to be a giant piece of shit because he's the only one crazy enough to take a shot Sam, maybe you should have talked to her instead of leaving her alone that one time. <laughs> instead of, of looking up her dress or whatever you had to do. I <laughs> didn't, dude. I tried not to. She walked over my face. Hey, Chrissy, Chrissy, you're, you, are, you like a, are you a Dr. Ruth? Are you today's Dr. Ruth? Is that what you're... Oh, my God. I mean, I don't have any, you know, medical... I, have, I mean, I have a communications degree, and we all know what that's worth in Well, that's never stopped a woman from giving her opinion before, so keep um, going. <laughs> God, I mean, am I... I would love, I mean, that would be the biggest I have a compliment to be. Can, okay, sure. I talk to a lot of porn stars. I have a lot of porn star friends. So if, if I do a little making out smooching with my clone, is that, is that a little gay or is that just narcissism? <laughs> is that gay? I would say that's more narcissism. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how is that different than masturbating? You know, it's how is it? Say. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you can clone your dick right now. Like they sell little kits. Like I could clone my vagina. You just put this like, you know, when you go to the orthodontist and they fill your mouth with like that, you know, they're going to make a little thing of your teeth. So if you clone your own dick and fuck yourself with it, is that gay? I don't think so. I think that's just getting to know yourself. Getting to know. Well, you know, the last great American <laughs> to blow himself was Ron Jeremy. And look how that went. So, I mean, just keep that in mind. That's probably the recipe. So That's probably opening a Pandora's box you don't want. The Lord gave you that many ribs for a reason. And for you to be able to break that, well, you're dancing with the devil, brother. And look where Ron Jeremy is. Six. I wonder who's going to get more a uh, higher bail. Uh, Ron Jeremy or just Lane Maxwell, right? <laughs> just like. Wow. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe Chrissy Teigen canceled. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, oh, my God. God, you're going hard in the paint. 
it's just crazy. It's just such a, this, like, it, it's just crazy how pedophilia is so political. It's just like this army of Karens have come out for Chrissy Teigen and just we don't want to look at anything that's going on, what her husband's done. When she talks about the craziest sex party she's ever been to, with a, and it's Obama's party, and he's like, we ain't talking about Not that. Not talking about that. Did you see his face in that clip? He's like, yeah, no. And she's like, we weren't at the White House, which to me, I was like, okay, is that out in the woods then? Is uh, that Jeffrey it? Epstein. Now, Ugh. I don't know if she's actually yeah. on the flight logs. I've seen, I've seen, uh, you know, other versions people, of it, but I mean, it's kind of crazy though. And then, and then legend says like, oh, well it was before he was in the white house. So I'm like, hmm, I, wonder if, creepier. I wonder if that part is a lie. I don't know, but you could tell that he was like, we are not supposed to be bringing this up. So, I mean, we just live in a time now where a woman has to use social media and like hitting code to try to have people help her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I've had some of my friends uh, go through this. My dad went through this with his father. And when dads start to get a little older, they start getting a little ornery. But everybody <laughs> remembers when they were a kid and dad and this fear comes into them. It's kind of like when circuses, you know, when they get a baby elephant, they tie the baby elephant up with a, a rope. And the baby elephant can't get away. And psychologically, this rope now is a, uh, like titanium chains to this element el- elephant and when the elephant gets older you know uh it doesn't try to run when you tie it onto a rope because it thinks it's this rope that it couldn't get away from when it was a baby and what we're doing i see people do this all the time they allow their fathers to run rampant on them because of how they were as kids mm-hmm. and uh it really sucks i wish somebody in that in that family would stand up and take care of that kid and take care of Brittany and tell that dad to get his head off his ass. Sometimes we got to do that, man. And sadly, sometimes we got to slay our fathers and let them know that who's the head of the, who, who's the head of the family now. And it sucks because sometimes dads try to hold on to the power no, and they go a little no, cuckoo crazy. No, you're going Jordan Peterson. I'm not <laughs> going to slay my father. No, no. <laughs> I'm not saying anyone's dad is bad. I love my, my father. My dad sucks. Do you know when my brother's wife was pregnant this uh, with this with their first kid? Um, you know, my brother's wife is not a size two. She's just like a regular lady from North Carolina, you know. And my dad, as he was driving them both to the airport, she's pregnant with their first son. He said to my brother and his wife, "I better not see a fat little grandkid running around here." And like. Which like blew my fucking mind. And like, I could see it. My brother kind of like started to cut, he would never be blatant and call him out kind of like the way I do, but he has definitely cut off emotionally. And he's just like, but he's a, he's an amazing dad. And now they have two. Yeah. Um, and it's just because dad was the big boy when he was a kid. It's like, you know, I mean, it's like my brother's bigger than me, but when he was a kid, I used to whoop that ass. Right. And now he still has that kind of in his head. Not that I would ever fight my dad, my brother, but it's like that's psychologically still there. Well, I think oh, yeah. they're going to fight back against uh, old Papa Bear there, James or whatever his name is, uh, because because uh, Brittany's mom said something snarky about him, and then the uh, the uh, he allegedly some form of abuse uh, to Brittany's older son. Uh, Because KFED filed a police report on it, and he, in fact, got slapped with a three-year restraining order against the grandkids. So I think, you know, in due time, uh, this is going to all come out, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how deep the the truth goes. Like, you know, is it going to go all the way to, uh, you know, ritualistic elements, or is it just plain old-fashioned, you know, textbook abusive and... uh, you know, taking advantage of her to make that money. Yeah. And there's so much symbolism that runs through like all of her album art, like the keyholes and the cages and the chains. And I guess I've heard from photographers or uh, people that have worked on her albums. Like, yeah, she always wants like the cage to be involved somehow, you know, on her live shows too. As today's Dr. Ruth, what, (laughs) what bodily part would the keyhole relate to? Ooh, I mean, I would Understood. say that it has Great to do question. with like her, her like mental prison. 
perhaps. Oh, Are you trying to make a sexy joke? Should I try to? I thought, I try you, to, I th- I thought am I volleying this back? Never mind. No, no, like I'm tight like a keyhole. I don't know. <laughs> I'm more like a door someone's punched through. No, I don't know. So I want to show you guys something <laughs> real quick. You know, uh, you know, now having children, we turn on the ch- children's television, and uh, man, the amount of symbolism in these kids' cartoons. <gasps> No. It's unbelievable to the point you have to just put your lip and be like, oh. So the other day I'm, cha- I'm taking my daughter out of her uh, sleepwear, right? And I start looking at the, at the symbols on this. It's symbols everywhere. And out of nowhere, this, no way. I see an eye. It's just staring right at me. Where is it? Hold on. Uh, it's, just, it's just staring right at me. Can you guys see this? It's just eye? one there eye on the there whole thing? There's the eye, right? How creepy is that? I'm like, why is that eye right there? And then I go, oh, there's a planet. What planet is that? Planet Saturn. Has to be. Yeah. There's no Saturn way. right there, right? You're like, holy shit. Why is Saturn and the eye right there? You're like, what else is on these kids? I mean, we're talking like four month old. Oh, interesting. Let's see what else is there. Oh, is that the pedophile symbol for boy love? Yeah. Is that supposed to be a lollipop? Yeah. Oh, my God. But what is right next to it? The pedophile symbol for girl love. Right next to it. Oh, that one does look close. What do you mean? They all look close. Look at this one. Look at the the lollipop. The lollipop, I don't know. What do you? Okay. Real quick. Apparently, I didn't make my uh, argument very well. That's not an eye. That's not an eye. That's not the symbol right there. Usually, isn't it more pointed, more like triangular? There's a triangle one I've seen. There's a triangle one, but there's also the uh, squiggly one. It goes like the uh, softer edges. Okay, you guys are dead. Yeah, I mean, I'm there with you on the heart one. But what about Saturn? Why is Saturn on the kids' clothes? Why is this random eye just right there? Yeah, it's just one eye on the whole stretchy. Are there eyes anywhere else? Well, there's, I mean, there's, there's no two eyes together. Hmm. It's not Celine Dion's clothing line, is it? I was going to say, is that new, 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 yeah, exactly. Oh, you guys, I'm a little upset. You know what the eye have is. Have you seen in the cartoons, Sam? Like, have you seen, like, what, yeah. what was that I thing with Elsa? Yeah, I and, and, and Martha tells me, shut the fuck up and let them enjoy their fucking animation. That's what <laughs> I get every time. You know yeah. what the eye is, right? The symbolism in, the, in like, the Crowley system. Isaac knows. Y'all know what it is. It's I a horse, right? Yeah, but what is that really? What is it, Isaac? The booty it, hole, dude. The butt hole? <gasps> yeah. Is it really the butt hole, man? <laughs> uh, I mean, it has the multiple meanings, but that's one of the meanings. One of many. One happens to just be a butt hole. He was into that butt play for, uh, he, he established three levels of uh, initiation in the OTO, and it was about playing with that B hole. Yeah. Man, everything's hey. about the bee hole. Is that I, I what Brown that Eyed Girl is about? Is that, is, that too, so. the, is that what the song Brown Eyed Girl is about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. This was a great, I love, ta- this is a great podcast. Love talking to each one of you. Can we each go down and tell them where they can find our stuff? Jay, we'll start with you. Yeah, you can go to Jay's Analysis. That's my website. Uh, I got two books, Esoteric Hollywood 1 and 2. And you can go to my YouTube channel, uh, Jay Dyer. And then all the other social medias, I'm just Jay Dyer. Thank you. Chrissy? Oh, yeah. Um, check out my podcast, the Chrissy Mayer Podcast, on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, check me out on Compound Media on The Wet Spot, which is that sex dating relationship advice show. We have fun, tons of fun, like comics and porn stars on. Uh, I also interview porn stars on my one-on-one podcast, but also more like libertarian types, more, more conspiracy types. Um, so that's all good. And yeah, follow me on all the social media things at Chrissy Mayer. And I'm on Parlor too. So that's fun. Well, congratulations on all your success. Isaac? I'm on IlluminatiWatcher.com, and uh, I've got a bunch of books on Amazon and Audible that I self-narrated, and you can listen to my dumb podcast. It's called Conspiracy Theories and Unpopular Culture uh, on iTunes and uh, Spotify and all that. I'll check out – I already listened to Jay and I already listened to Sam. I'll check out Chrissy's uh, – uh, if you got an interview with Bonnie Rotten, I'm in the fan club. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm working <laughs> on her. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just – I'm just joking. 
Um, but anyways, yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm all over the place on the socials too. You can go to LuminatiWatcher.com to get all the links to all the stuff. Thanks. What about you, Sam? Hold on real quick. Johnny, can you give yours real quick? Can you tell them where to find you? Yeah. Hey, hold on just a second. Uh, yeah. Johnny Woodard on it. Twitter, Johnny A. Woodard on Instagram. Check out Broken Simulation. Uh, that's youtube.com forward slash Sam Tripoli comedy. Uh, yep, you can find me at Sam, you can find me at Ronan Sam Tripoli. Why that lasts on Twitter. You can find me on YouTube at youtube.com backslash Sam Tripoli. Why that lasts. Um, they are just dinging me on just crazy stuff, dude. They they gave me a Facebook memory, told me to share it. I shared it and then told me I broke uh, community standards and then they what? ding me for three days sounds like you too yeah what was the thing what was the memory it was a uh, flyer for a naughty show with tara patrick no nudity no naughty words no nothing what? it was 10 it was either it was seven to ten years old so check that out and uh <laughs> check out i have two youtube channels i have uh, youtube.com backslash sam Tripoli, then youtube.com backslash uh, Sam Tripoli comedy and just all my comedy shows. So check that out. I have a brand new spiritual podcast and that is on rockfin.com uh, backslash zero. And it's just a spiritual podcast and check out my uh, Tim fall hat Patreon at Tim hat.com backslash Patreon uh, backslash Tim fall hat. I do daily doses, 20, 30 minute shows every, uh, Monday through Friday on the biggest stories in the world of conspiracies guys. This was great. I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you guys. Stay on be when we end it. I just want to tell you guys some stuff and uh, I appreciate you guys. And uh, thank you guys so much. Great episode. And we'll do it again soon.